Just like awareness never becomes anything that it creates, produces, perceives, imagines, and so forth. You can even be identified super heavily with your body, with your personality, with your self-image, with your society, with your nation, with your political views. You can be so identified with that, but that essential awareness, which hears my voice right now, which looked in the mirror when you were eight years old, which looked in the mirror this morning, it's the same. It has no ideas. It is the power to create, produce, and believe in whatever you choose to create, produce, or believe in. So formless awareness, formless, the power that you are right now, that hears my voice, that formless power, which you can't find, you can't put it next to you on a couch, you can't put it in your pocket, you can't put it in your bank account, you can't give it to another person, yet it's always here as the essence of I am, as the essence of I know. That clarity, that essential primordial naked awareness, when it sees a form that itself produced, because all form, all experience happens where? In awareness. You're aware of a form because of awareness. So inside of that awareness, we could say, it doesn't really have a location, but we could say that inside of awareness, inside of formless awareness, there appears form and shape like a painter. Awareness is like the creative intelligence of a painter that's able to paint form. But if the painter forgets the painter and it indulges or gets lost in or starts to mingle with what it is painting too much, now it's going to create an illusory effect called I am this shape or I am this form or I am this feeling or there's a consequence to doing this and then it will hurt me or there's a consequence to doing that and then it will give me pleasure or expansion. You see? But at all times, you're that infinite formless painter. This is self-realization is what we're aiming to realize, help you realize. So now that awareness forgets its essential formlessness, is unable to recognize that abstract reality that's so evidently here, just like the space is right here, but goes unnoticed because it's so abstract, formless and subtle and always there. Similarly, Awareness forgetting itself, the power to know, not recognizing itself, but only focusing on objects and thoughts and forms and ideas, it develops this sense of self. The sense of self then starts seeking its own source, its own self. That's the irony. That's the funny part, the painfully funny part for many. And so that's why Buddha said life equals suffering or life is suffering. That's what the Buddha meant, in my opinion. It's that association, that attachment is suffering, that forgetfulness is suffering. And so what then happens to our free will? What happens to our will? Our will, which is again, this formless kind of power, you can almost picture it to make it a little bit more tangible for the mind to imagine it, we could say, formless awareness is kind of like a liquid fluid power, kind of like water. Hmm? And now this water, it's more like gas, it's even subtler than gas, but we could say it's water just to make it a little bit clear as an analogy for the mind. Awareness is like water. Your free will is like water, it can flow, it can create shapes, it can create waves, tiny little ripples, it can create a calm state of experiencing, it can create different kinds of shapes, it can uh, clash into the ocean shore, it can have deep undercurrents on the bottom floor of the ocean and so forth. So that's the power to create. But water is never affected by that. Water always maintains its waterness, you see. Just like awareness never becomes anything that it creates, produces, perceives, imagines, and so forth. You can even be identified super heavily with your body, with your personality, with your self-image, with your society, with your nation, with your political views. You can be so identified with that, but that essential awareness, which hears my voice right now, which looked in the mirror when you were eight years old, which looked in the mirror this morning, it's the same. It has no ideas. It is the power to create, produce, and believe in whatever you choose to create, produce, or believe in. You have the power to imagine, like water can shape itself. Awareness can also shape itself without losing its essential waterness or formless essence at the same time. That's the simultaneity, the paradox of formlessness and form. Waterness is never becoming anything else, even if it creates a shape. So they simultaneously exist, the illusion of form, the production of form and shape and size and name, as well as the underlying unity of the essence 
of this awareness, which right now hears my voice. But what then happens to our will, especially as a human being, getting conditioned as a human being, in our society in particular? We do a thing that I call, we freeze our free, free will. We put our free will in the freezer. First, we kind of divide it up into little chunks, okay? So we have this infinite potential freedom here. But then we say like, oh no, I'm this, and I'm also a little bit of that. And I also am that, but I don't want to see that. So I'm gonna, kind of going to forget about that. So that's back there in some kind of a shadow drawer. And then there's this, which I really want to become because it will give me such or such validation or confirmation of my worthiness to exist, which I always so desperately want to prove to other people that I deserve to be part of this creation. Weird, but that's what we do to each other and ourselves. So we have these little boxes, we give things names. So we partition ourselves, we segment ourselves, we separate ourselves into little chunks. And then we put these chunks into the freezer. So they become like little ice cubes of self, little portions of self that we've stowed away. And that water of that creative power, that empowerment, that freedom is now frozen. It's still water. It's still infinite free will but it's free will that's frozen in a particular thought or idea or identification. And more and more, they'll be taking chunks out of the freezer. Oh, this image of self, oh, that belief of self, oh, this thing I don't, didn't want to look at, or this thing I feared, or that thing I desired, but didn't think I was worthy to desire. All these little chunks, these are just examples. We have many of such labels, right? But it's like taking a little ice cube of your own self, of your own mind, of your own consciousness, out of the freezer, working with it until it thaws out. And now your body of liquidity, of free will, in free form, in conscious, deliberate, liquid form, has increased. Now you have more power to apply this will. This isn't part of what I mean with gathering your will. Part of it is concentration exercise, which we'll get into in a second, oh, a few seconds. Um, but another part of it is taking those frozen, compartmentalized, partitioned segments of yourself out of the freezer, looking at them until they thaw out, therefore regathering your free will, amassing, amassing, gathering free will, increasing your liquidity so you can move and make things happen in your life, among other things. So I hope this analogy makes sense. I think it will, even if it doesn't immediately, just consider it again in a couple of days, maybe watch the video again. So that's one element of it. It's looking at the portions of ourselves we may not always want to look at that get triggered, that are frightened, and bringing greater awareness using that conscious fl fluid, liquid portion of our consciousness to look at the more frozen portions of our consciousness. And what happens when an ice cube meets water for long enough, it becomes water, it melts. Same when your unconscious mind is met lovingly, and for some period of time, intentionally, by your conscious mind, the unconscious melts back into the conscious and becomes part of the conscious liquidity of your free will. This is one way to gather your free will to increase your spiritual power, your spiritual freedom, your spiritual sense of who you are to not just be a robotic human being as people expect you to be. And as you've trained yourself to be, you become more and more free, both in an absolute sense of self realization, but also in an active sense in terms of how you wish to actualize yourself into this life. So that's one component of it, one aspect, the other aspect of gathering your will is what we'll get into now, which is something you can just practice very directly, even for short moments. And that is, by means of concentration, you can also gather your will. Because what happens when we're in this sort of mostly frozen state, we're also tend to be scattered. Because these portions that are in the frozen portions of ourselves in our unconscious, they do still influence our thoughts, our biases, our feelings, our decisions from the background, just unconsciously, like a program, right? And who wants to be a program? So we got to look at all those fears and stuff. But then what happens in that mostly frozen state of the unconscious guiding most of our conscious thoughts and directions is that we're typically very scattered. 
because now every object in life means a potential threat to our tiny little sense of identification with form. And because everything is perceived as a threat or as an opportunity for our ambition, then we're relating to all the objects and people and opportunities in our life, for the most part, in a very scattered way. We just have these random scattered thoughts, some kind of come from the freezer portion of ourselves. And then we react to that with our conscious thoughts, but we don't quite understand what in the world is going on sometimes. And we try to make sense of things, we try to acquire things, we try to hold on to things, we try to uh, move away from things we don't like and so forth. So now the conscious part that is left, that is still liquid, what we call the conscious mind, or you could say your conscious attention is scattered. Most of us have a scattered attention. So the other way to gather your will and your spiritual strength and freedom and power is by bringing your attention back to a single point of being or a single choice of thought or focus, aka concentration. What you're doing then is you're making the most use of the portion of your mind or consciousness, which is still liquid, which is still free to move and choose and know itself. And you're gathering at least all those portions together so that you have this single body of water of, of awareness, aware of yourself. And what happens when we do that? We start to feel at home within ourselves again. You could quite literally say, suddenly for that moment, you feel yourself and you notice how much you did not actually feel yourself internally during the day. And there's typically a sigh of relief that happens very organically, automatically. As soon as you bring your will back and you take it off of all the scattered objects of your day and your life and your work life and your relationships, and you just have the moment to yourself, for instance, the body, the whole body responds is like, ah, there I am just a conscious moment of feeling the liquidity that I have left. <laughs> Sounds a little bit uh, doomsday scenario, but we'll, we'll get to the positive sides of this. And then you feel like, oh, yes, I feel myself now I can notice my own attention. I'm noticing the fact that I exist, that I am here. I have a more centered feeling my body kind of responds, it feels more like I'm in my heart, maybe. I feel centered, I feel myself, I can hear myself almost, I can even the silence of myself, the presence of myself, I'm feeling. And so it's a sense of homecoming, which is super organic, it cannot really be explained. But you know what I mean, you've all had those moments, whether consciously, and deliberately or not, or accidentally. But the art is to bring yourself back so often that you become super sensitive to when you're scattered. So that you always maintain this big body of liquidity inside your free will where your free will is free to move, to know itself, to pay attention, to catch subtleties, to have clear insight into situations and itself, to see itself clearly, to accept itself and to become more and more the creator that it already secretly is, thawing out more and more of those frozen portions, heading to the body, body of water, the body of liquidity. All right, so the gathering of your will is the sense of taking your senses back from the world objects, things you've been seeing, hearing, feeling, relating with, thinking about, and bringing the mind and the senses back to, again, your true self has no location, and it's not inside the body, ultimately. But the body is sort of an intermediary between your formless location free self or spirit, and your relationship to the world. So it's kind of like this good bridge that's always present for you here, as an initial step to return to. That's why a lot of meditation techniques focus on the body, or the breath, or the heart, or relaxing the body, being aware of the whole body, and so forth. It's because it's a bridge. It doesn't end there. It's a gateway. It's a segue. So, but you can use that. It's very powerful, because the body is tangible. It's difficult for a lot of form dependent minds or consciousnesses, to go instantly to the formless, locationless, ever present, all permeating, infinite self. You know, it's so abstract, it's so formless, we've covered it over with so many associations of being the body, having a personal life inside this world, that it's difficult 
for most people to snap right into whee, the bliss of freedom of no thingness, yet pure existence. It's possible, and you're going to develop that during this course more and more. And we're setting, we're prepping the ground for that right now. So why not imagine for a moment that you can do that at the end of this 30 days, that you, whenever you want to, not as an escape per se, but just as, a, as something in your toolkit, that you can instantly snap yourself out into a state of self-recognition, which then emanates in the body and the mind as a sense of bliss, as a sense of divine radiance, as a sense of illumination, as a sense of the soothing, easy energy that just, ah, this homecoming. What if you could just snap your fingers and just by remembering this, you could snap into that formless freedom and be home instantly.